BlizzBro's coverage of BlizzCon 2016 is brought to you by Steel Series. We are esports. Hello, everybody. This is Leviathan and Nineball, and we're here with BlizzPro at BlizzCon 2016, and it's been an absolutely awesome time here. Uh, we are going to interview some special guests here to my left. Could you guys introduce yourselves first? Absolutely. Uh, I'm Matthew Berger. I'm a senior designer. And I am Julia Humphreys. I am a lead producer on the Diablo team. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for sitting down with us to talk about some of the awesome Diablo stuff that we've seen so far. Yeah, definitely. All right, start us off. All right, so obviously some of the big things that we've uh, had announced here, we'd like to ask you some questions about the new um, anniversary zone that we have uh, coming out. So some of the things that we wanted to know, what was it that triggered like the inspiration for wanting to go back and redo Diablo 1 in Diablo 3? Do you want me to go or do you want to go? I think we both got a lot to say about this, but <laughs> so... Um, well, obviously, it's the 20th anniversary of Diablo, and this is just a momentous occasion, both as players of the game and also as people working on the game. And we really wanted to do something special to celebrate the 20th anniversary um, and to kind of bring back that nostalgia and that trip down memory lane of what it was like the first time you fired up Diablo 1 20 years ago and kind of recapture some of that feeling inside of Diablo 3. Yeah, and it's, it's sort of a snowball event kind of thing. Um, we started as we started working on it we weren't exactly sure what we were going to do so we started small you know let's add the music that'd be very inspirational people will remember it'll you know they'll get that tingle and it just over time it kind of grew let's let's do a little bit more let's you know let's do a little bit more and how much can we do really let's just add you know the whole game if we can let's try and recreate it let's make it look like it should look and uh, and so it just kind of snowballed from that point and we ended up with 16 levels uh, i think it's four bosses the four bosses um, we uh, we uh, did a lot of work on the visuals and uh, and even on, on the sound, uh, so that it sounds exactly like it would back then, and and a little disjointed. And even when your characters start to move, which is I think the most telling, and you're gonna be like, oh, this looks cool, and then you're gonna start running, and you're not. You're just gonna <laughs> kind of walk no fast. There is no running. Yeah, we actually uh, we actually call the uh, the the pixelated look that we put on top of it, we call it glorious retrovision, you know, and uh, like the team has really rallied around behind it. And they just, uh, yeah, it's just been a passion project. Awesome. All right. So we actually next wanted to know, uh, why did you decide to do a timed event? So this is just happening for January, correct? Yeah, that's correct. So obviously the anniversary of Diablo 1 was December 31st, 1996. Uh, most people didn't play it until January of 97. Mm -hmm. So the month of January is really the anniversary of the birth of the Diablo series. So we wanted to have this kind of seasonal event that would come back uh, once a year around the time of the anniversary um, starting this year. That's, that's, that covers it. That's a much nicer <laughs> answer than I was going to give. <laughs> I, I was just going to say that's how anniversaries work. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get to have your birthday every day. It's, uh, Some people would. <laughs> Some people would tell you different. I, you know, I, think, um, I think one of the cool things is it is an anniversary. We do want to celebrate it at the, on, at the right moment. It also makes it a little bit special. It's going to go away, and then it'll come back, and you'll, you know, you'll be able to look forward to it instead yeah. of maybe just binging on it and then moving forward moving past. I think this is something that every year you'll be able to look forward to, which is kind of nice. Awesome. Concentrates the coolness, right? Uh, well, you, you've paid attention. Yeah, I yeah. like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when you, you mentioned earlier that you have like the full 16 levels from the original Diablo that are going to be in this event, were there like additional like new art assets that were created for the tile sets? Like uh, what, what went into the development of the, uh, the cre recreation of the descent from the cathedral down into hell? Um, so uh, obviously we were trying to, to, to put in as much as, as we could and, and um, this is sort of almost like a side project for us. So what we did is we actually we went looking for the tile sets in the game that most mirrored the original tile set and sometimes we made uh, small modifications but on the whole we're trying to reuse tile sets from the game more than anything else. Same with uh, the monsters, we looked for monsters that were appropriate sort of one-to-one -one comparisons and then sometimes we modified their AI so that they would behave the way you expected, the way you remembered but we, we tried on the whole not to make completely new things. Uh, when we went a little bit further out is uh, for the, you know, the butcher and all that, we tried to make him look a little bit more like he would because obviously we have a butcher, but he looks very different. 
Yeah, I would just add to that that um, <clears throat> we already had so much in the game that was an homage to Diablo 1 because we loved it so much. Like, we already had a lot of the monsters mm -hmm. that we had pulled from there, so it was pretty easy to find the ones that were going to work in this situation. Um, I think Lazarus was the big exception to the bosses because we don't have him in the game, so he right. had the most sort of unique work done to him. All right, so I'm all about the loot, right? I want to know what are the rewards that we're going to be able to get after we do this. And also throughout, will there be loot dropping when we're fe defeating monsters in there? Yes, yes, there will. Uh, and there may be some throwbacks to uh, some things that are going to sort of tickle that nostalgia button that you're finding dropping in the world. Um, awesome. So we've announced a few goodies that you'll be getting as you play through. So there's a butcher pet um, that you'll be able to get. Baby butcher. Baby yeah. butcher, yeah. <laughs> there are um, there's some transmogs that are going to be dropping. Um, you'll be able to find the original butcher's cleaver. You'll be able to get Wurt's wooden leg. I don't know if you guys saw the panel oh yesterday, yeah. but yeah, you can dual <laughs> wield. Yeah. That's so awesome. <laughs> um, and there are actually a, a bunch of other sort of Easter eggs or surprises in there that we, we don't want to spoil too much. But yeah, if you okay, poke around okay. quite a bit, you'll find some fun stuff. All right. Um, we have uh, some other questions because the other big announcement from uh, BlizzCon this year was the introduction of a new class, the Necromancer. And uh, we wanted to know uh, what went into deciding to put the Necromancer into the game. Were there other classes in the running or like what, what was the inspiration for picking that one particular class from uh, prior years to put back in? Uh, well, I guess I'd start off by saying like the Necromancer is one of our most requested classes, you mm -hmm. know, from the community, and it's also certainly a team favorite. You know, people on the team adore it just as much as the rest of the community does. So there was a strong push from the team. If we're going to do a new class, this was the one that we wanted to do. Um, I don't know if you have more details you want to share on that. Well, I mean, I, I think I think that. I'm going to talk anyways, but I, I, th I think that mostly covers it. it, it, it the, the, the community has wanted the Necromancer for a long time. You know, if there's a, an incredible emotional attachment to that class. Um, a lot of people on the team had the same one, uh, that same attachment. And I think people were very excited. And when we thought, well, maybe we should make a new class, it just immediately was at the top of the list. So that it sort of, I'm not going to say it was a no-brainer, but it was an emotional call. Uh, you know, it came from the heart. So we decided to do that. Well, skeletons don't have brains, so, you know. <laughs> well, ours might. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> This guy. All right, so then if the Necromancer is successful, not to jump too far into the future, right, but, like, the next question that you get once you have, oh, the Necromancer is here, well, what about the Druid or what about something else? So is this sort of like a test run or this is just a special case? I wouldn't call this a test run because we are, you know, going all in. We want to absolutely deliver something that the community is going to love. Um, there's no holding back. We we're get, going to give you the best Necromancer experience you can have, the deadliest one you can have. Nice. Um, we're not talking about anything else, as, as often is the case. Um, but we want to make sure that the players who are going to buy the Necromancer are going to get the full Diablo 3 experience. You'll be able to play him in Adventure Mode. Obviously, you will also be able to play him in the campaign. Uh, which is nice for you know for those players who want to go back and play that um, and you expect sets expect talents expect runes you know the usual you're going to have a great uh, experience playing the necromancer and when you mention the campaign is there going to be like full like voice work for everything and cutscenes added in and such it's going to be full voice work it is as if you were playing the necromancer at launch except you're playing it with the best version of Diablo 3 as possible because we've done many many changes very nice. Uh, were there any particular like uh, fun moments or like difficulties that you had in designing the Necromancer? Or were there any iconic skills that you had that proved uh, more challenging than others to actually fit it into like the Diablo 3 engine? You want to start? Uh, sure. Yeah, well, so when we started developing the Necromancer, obviously the first thing that sort of burst out of everyone was corpse explosion. We've uh, got to uh -huh. do corpse explosion. So, uh, you know, we had to do that as a throwback to the original uh, in Diablo 2. Um, that was definitely a challenge for us, though, because we don't really have corpses in Diablo 3, right. right? Like, we handle our bodies very differently. They get disintegrated. They get turned into physics and flown all over the screen, mm -hmm. right? So how are we going to approach that in Diablo 3? So we really settled on corpses as an additional resource for the necromancer so only the necromancer can see that little bit of corpse that gets left behind when all the other fun stuff that happens bit. yeah okay well you know <laughs> the, the, the big the yeah. big uh, <laughs> hunk of meat um, and uh, so only the necromancer can see that and uh, becomes an, another resource for him to use we're, we're using it in corpse explosion right now um, we anticipate he'll be using it in other skills as well do do different necromancers see different corpses or, or is it like a singular shared corpse for triggering abilities answer to that? I actually don't. I think it's a singular. Okay. I All right. Think, but 
We might have to get back to you on that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yes. Because the same screen will go up. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, cool. So uh, people have been asking, what are the class-specific items? You know, the Crusaders have their shields. Demon Hunters have their crossbows. What can we look forward to for the Necromancer? Well, for the moment, we're not talking about that. Um, <laughs> he has a bone shield, I mean, obviously, uh, mm -hmm. as, you, as you saw. Um, I think we're not yet ready to talk about how the itemization is going to, to play out. Um, we're going to want to uh, fill out his uh, skill set because that's where you start to then break it with giving him overpowered sets and items and all that. So you kind of have to start with what abilities is he going to use? Let's flesh out his skill set completely and then, okay, how can we amp this up? How can we make this really be uh, incredible and overpowered and awesome? Oh, we're going to do this set and that's going to do that. So we're, we're at this, the, the previous stage kind of figuring all those things out first. So mm -hmm. we're not ready to talk about all the items yet. Okay. All right. Um, we have uh, we also learned that there's two new zones that are going to be added in uh, to Diablo three: the Shrouded Moors and the Temple of the Firstborn. Uh, like, where exactly in the world are these going to be? How do they play into you know the overarching world that we have so far? So, um, for the moment, uh, the plan is to put them in Act two. Uh, so these are they're going to be in Act two, um, and they're adventure mode only zones. And uh, we're going to be sort of pushing the model that we did with Grey Hollow and the Runes of Shashron, which is trying to deliver um, events and narrative that embrace adventure mode. Because adventure mode is really where all our players are right now. The majority of our players really enjoy that. And we want to embrace that every time we add new features. And so when we're adding a new zone, we, we have to embrace that. You're going to be playing it in adventure mode. We would like you to get a cool story. How are we going to be able to deliver that? So we're focusing on, on that aspect right now. How are we going to build the events so that they take advantage of the replayability? Mm -hmm. How are we going to build the events that they take advantage of multiple players going through them? So that's, that's sort of the angle we're exploring um, for those two new zones. All right. So you're going to see more like nonlinear storytelling, like how we saw the, the, like the lore behind Grey Hollow Island unfold. Yeah, we're, we're exploring things in that vein. We also want to push the envelope a little bit further from Grey Hollow, not redo the exact same thing. Um, so we have some ideas we're kind of working on right now. But uh, um, yeah, expect something like that. Uh, if we look back, Grey Hollow Isle was very kind of expansive. It almost felt like there was this one part, and then you kind of cross that bridge, and then there's a second part to it. So in terms of scale or size, are we talking similar to that, or more to like when the you opened up the other side of the Leoric's uh, Manor? No, it's 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 much uh, closer to Grey Hollow than it is to to Leoric's Manor. It's it's a, it's a much larger space. Leoric's Manor was very much, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we went this up the stairs on the right side? Yes, it would. And, <laughs> and let's build, a, you know, let's build a layout that that makes sense. And let's build, a, you know, it's not a, a random layout; it's a fixed layout on purpose in the, in that case. And again, that one's a much more of a little bit of a passion project almost. Hey, let's do that. That'll be cool. The, the new the new zones are, are going to be much larger than, than that area, much closer to Great Hollow Island. Gotcha. So last time I sat with you guys, right, we were talking about console because it was a brand new thing. Everyone's super excited. I think something that's getting swept a little under the rug right now is that seasons are coming to yeah. consoles. And so we've had a ton of people tweeting to like talk to them about it, ask them. So one of the concerns, of course, is people can do some nefarious things on consoles. So how are you going to combat that with having competitive stuff now? Yeah. I can I can do it, but I've been talking a lot. No, that's okay. Yeah. So um, so something Im important to note is that this is only coming to PS4 and Xbox One, mm -hmm. right? And obviously, every time you start a new character in Seasons, you're rolling from the beginning, right? So you're not going to be able to move any of your characters over from PS3 to 360 into this environment to be able to play in Seasons. I mean, we're obviously hyper aware that this could be an issue, so we're going to have to keep an eye on it. Um, it's, we're, it's definitely a top of our minds, but we want to, to try this and really try to bring uh, the full featured experience to our console players. It's very exciting. Yeah, I think that about wraps up all of our questions that we had here today. Thank you very much for going through and joining us here. And again, yeah. uh, stay tuned to Bl uh, BlizzPro for more content and uh, features that we have covering all the events here at uh, BlizzCon 2016, uh, brought to you by our partner SteelSeries. <laughs> BlizzPro's coverage of BlizzCon 2016 is brought to you by SteelSeries. We are esports.